welcome to Great British Ghosts. Later on, I'll be crossing the border into Wales to visit the new inn near Chepstow. But first, I'm on the English side in the Forest of Dean at the imposing St Breville's Castle, which dates back to the 11th century. St Breville's has been an important fortification on the border with Wales since the medieval times, when King John used it as a hunting lodge. It's had a violent and turbulent history down through the ages and is said to be brimming with ghosts. Local historian and author Ross Andrews agreed to show me around. Hi, Ross. Oh, hello. What a great door. Oh, it's phenomenal. <laughs> yes, welcome to St. Breville's. It's a brilliant castle. It's obviously very old. Well, actually, yeah, the original one was here going back a thousand years. We're talking sort of Norman castles. The bit you're in now is actually 13th century, though. Well, you can see the walls are really thick. It's obviously got masses of history. Oh, a great phenomenal. recipe for ghosts. <laughs> a phenomenal amount of history here. And ghosts, I mean, even the bit you've just come through is haunted. We've got phantom horses that go up and down here. We've had people being let in through that gate. And then the person letting them in turns around and there's actually nobody there. And that's a heavy gate. Oh, that gate's swung open before, like poltergeist activities, smashed it against the wall. But it's solid oak, absolutely massive. So it's very haunted, then? Unbelievable. <laughs> in fact, come and have a look at these ghosts we have in here. <laughs> right, so we're going to take you upstairs to King John's Lounge, which is a phenomenally haunted room. Ross, uh, this is now a working youth hostel, isn't it? Oh, yes, yeah, you can stay here. You can actually stay in the prisons, you can stay in the hanging rooms. That's a bit um, spooky for the kids. Uh, we try not to tell the children all the ghost stories. <laughs> um, but lots of ghost groups actually specifically book to stay in a prison for the evening. Now, this one here, King John's room, or known as the solar room, because of the amount of windows we have in here. Um, some of the really famous stories are situated in this room here mostly to do with the fireplace we have here. Now, one of the really famous ones is of a crying baby. When they renovated above the roof, they actually found a body of a baby, like mummified in the ceiling. Any idea when that dates back? Unfortunately maybe? not. Uh, no one's told me that one. Do but... they still hear the crying even oh, yeah, though the, the baby's come yeah, down? All really? The time. Really? Uh, we've heard it. Many gro uh, ghost groups come in here have actually managed to record it as well. But this also represents a lot of death. Now, in the castle, Lots of people have been executed. And one story is that each one of these notches on here represent one person that's been executed just by one particular judge. Now, over here, this table. Follow me. In fact, have a go at this one. Just try lifting that table for me. Oh, that's pretty heavy. <laughs> well, we had a group sat round here one evening, and they're all just sat here chatting. And watch your feet. Uh, they were all sat here, and then suddenly this happened, like that. At which point they all went running out of the room. How do you explain that? How do I explain it? Um, I don't, unfortunately. I wasn't here when that happened. I heard it downstairs, and I saw them all screaming down the stairs. But, I mean, there's hundreds more ghosts this way. Wow. Uh, there are hundreds of experiences. We've had groans, uh, weird kind of groans. We've had strange light anomalies that are definitely not dust or moths or anything we've we've um, we've had footsteps we've had chains rattling literally we've had doors moving we've had bangs we've had laughter uh, outside we've seen some of our guests have seen little uh, children heard children playing some of our guests have looked into mirrors and done something called scrying and actually completely been taken over by this experience and ended up fleeing from the room in tears, crying. Uh, and they, they report to see a certain face, and they all report to see the same face. That's a bit strange. Uh, but this place, this castle, has definitely uh, got strange things going on, hundreds of strange things going on. This part of the building, you're looking at 13th century. This is the West Tower. Um, <clears throat> now, we're going to head upstairs to the hanging room, so there's a lot of misery in this tower, but we're going up the haunted staircase. You'd certainly expect a hanging room to have pretty grisly memories. Well, there's lots of reports of footsteps coming up here, 
So when you're in the hanging room, you can hear somebody walk up these stairs, which, as you can hear, is quite noisy, but no one ever comes through this door. And then when you come out, there's nobody here. This is the hanging room we're in now. Now, people used to be hanged off the front of the building, and there's still beams above us that go out to the front of the castle where they used to actually hang you, wait till you're dead, cut the rope, and you drop down to the floor. How many centuries did that go on for? Oh, well, this place has been a prison for hundreds and hundreds of years. Now, my favourite story about this room involves a figure that walks across this room and ends up praying. So perhaps they were going to be a victim the next day, I don't know, of being hanged. Now, it was reported by a guy from Canada, first of all, um, and he was sleeping in one of these beds, and he woke up in the middle of the night, saw this woman walk across the floor and kneel down and disappear. About a month or so later, a group of Spanish students were in here, and they woke up, saw the same figure. I mean, the one kid was crying his eyes out and was inconsolable, and they gave a description of exactly the same figure. Now, there's no way a guy from Canada and a group of students from Spain are going to get together just to wind us up, so... One of my members of staff last summer had to go across and break up two dads who were just about to come to blows because one was accusing the other one's family of, uh, of actually making loads of noise above, but he said his family were fast asleep. So there's supposed to be children playing on the stairs and that you can hear from the rooms above, but there was nothing. So, yeah, that was quite an interesting one. To, and we'd heard those stories from other people as well about children playing, from staff who heard children playing upstairs when... Uh, when there was nobody actually stopping, and no one stopping in the East Tower. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of one that you kind of think, ah, interesting. And this is the prison. Now, if you follow me, this is basically one of the holding cells that the castle had. Imagine the misery as a prisoner in the 12th century walking into here. Well, you don't have to imagine it. It's written on the walls. We have graffiti all over the walls left by prisoners from hundreds and hundreds of years ago. And they know that this is from way back, oh, rather yeah, they, than they, a, a kid doing it now. Yeah, no, no, these, this is all written down in the history books. And that was somebody basically saying, I'll get you back for what you did to me. So this is desperate souls that have come in here and before they're, they're hanged or just die. Absolutely. I mean, some of the stuff in here is some of the more violent things in the fact that things get thrown around in here as well. And the people who have stayed in this room, they were sat in that window just over there and saw a pillow come from the bed that's behind us. It went flying across the room and ended up hitting one of them as they were sat in the... Uh, the window space you're in now. What are these bits here? Now, those, um, and you get these in other places as well, where they could recess uh, metal holding rings and they could, you could be chained to those. Over here, we have the East Tower. Where there's more. Oh, definitely. <laughs> this is one of the most famous ones. You've got the oubliette in here. Now, the oubliette, that's the pit where prisoners were thrown and left to die. Absolutely. In fact, the name oubliette comes from the French to forget oublier. And so... That's got to be one of the most miserable ways to die. Oh, believe me, it's horrible. Um, if anything, it's probably one of the most horrible places in the castle. Except for the fact it looks quite nice. <laughs> Just looks like a bedroom. Until we get to this part here. Let me just move all this for you. And... There we go. Oh, look at that! <laughs> so that's where bodies were just thrown. Yeah, and it used to be deeper than this. The actual roof collapsed at one point a few hundred years ago, so some of that rubble is actually from that. So it would have been another ten foot or so as well. So if you were lucky, you'd break your neck and die instantly. If you well, were yeah. unlucky, you'd rot to death. Well, you'd want to be the first one dead, because there's lots of reports in oubliettes of whoever died first got eaten first. That's got to produce some ghosts. Well, apparently, um, people say they feel stuff coming out. We've seen lights on camera actually coming out of this, and some of the people link the lights coming out of this to the actual scary bed that's just there. 
Now, this is possibly the most famous bed in the castle. Uh, this is called the scary bed because people who sleep in here, they've been lying here late at night and sometimes they wake up petrified and so on. But more importantly, this happens like that and the bed sheets will get thrown off them. Now, one guy had to wedge this bed. He moved the whole bed and wedged it against the wall. Because, and we asked him why. And he said, well, it was the only way I could get the sheets to stay on because they kept being grabbed and thrown across the room. So we're going to head down to the old kitchen down these stairs. And there's a reason it's called the old kitchen, and that's because it was the old kitchen. Oh, this looks fabulous. <laughs> well, my favourite feature in here has got to be this, a dog spit. And it's an original. What do you mean a dog spit? Well, they would put a dog inside here and it would run around. And this section here would have a chain in it linking it to the fireplace where the meat would actually be turning on a spit. So it's like a hamster wheel. <laughs> yeah, that exactly. That is so cruel. <laughs> but one of my favourite parts about this room is the poltergeist. And if you look up at the ceiling here, it's a lovely brand new ceiling. It's been here for about five years. Um, but stones appear and then just drop straight down like that onto people that are sat in here. I know it's unbelievable. I, yeah, I can't <laughs> quite get my head round. But we that. had 40 witnesses packed into this room one night and they were just watching stones appear and then just come straight down like that. How big are the stones? Uh, they vary from little tiny ones like that, but the biggest one I've seen was about that big. But as you can see, they can't come from the ceiling because it's all sealed. There's no way it could come from there. But that really is incredible, isn't it? That a stone oh, yeah. suddenly appears from nowhere. Well, we had one woman, in fact, sat on the sofa just here, and we told her the story, and she said, no, don't believe it, and she was sat just on the end of the sofa, and as she was going, no, it's all rubbish, Stone just landed straight next to her, like that, as if to say, yeah, right, there you go. I've had a number of experiences throughout the castle. One of the times I was in the old kitchen, and all of a sudden, little stones started appearing, but dropping straight down and I was in front of a group of 40 people and we all looked around and we couldn't understand where these stones were coming from because it was a new ceiling that had been put in. Uh, another time I was in the corridor outside of the State Department and we could hear women arguing, women talking, but yet there was only five people in the whole castle and they were all male. Well, St Breville's Castle certainly doesn't disappoint. Who knows if it is the most haunted place in the country, but with so many great ghost stories, surely it's got to be one of them. Chepstow in Wales, and although it's called the New Inn, it dates back to the 1700s, possibly even earlier. With a local history of paganism, the occult and witchcraft, it's the perfect place for some great British ghosts. The New Inn itself dates from 1730, but there was originally a Tudor house on the same site previously. Folklore tells a dark tale of a mother and daughter being hanged in a nearby tree for their alleged dabbling in the practice of witchcraft. The current landlady, Christine Edwards, has had lots of bizarre experiences herself and agreed to show me around. Strange things happen when I'm, when I'm away from the place. Um, I went on holiday once and the staff that was staying here uh, came down in the morning and said that all the cutlery on this table was pointing in an arrow towards the door. And she got the feeling that she wasn't welcome here. So someone was telling her to go? That's it, that's what she thought. It was pointing towards the door, go. And that couldn't have just been a prank? No, no, she, she swears that that happened. And quite a few things happened like that, as if to say, you're not welcome here. And she always got that feeling. And the, the strange part about this building, is this part of the building, is here, there's a well. Um, there's actually three wells in the building together, but this well here is capped off. But when they um, were building this part of the extension, um, they 
they em emptied what was in the well to cap it properly and they found a sword, an old sword, and it's now in Chepstow Museum. What's interesting about that is that if there are three wells, there's possibly three underground rivers going on, yep. which apparently is very sacred. Very. Which could mean that this maybe had some sort of pagan background. Mm -hmm. The new inn has a certain feel to it, and the further I delved, the more ghost stories started to come out. And now here we are in the village bar, and this is the location of the second well. So we've got the first well there, and we've got the second well here. So do you get a lot of activity in here? Because you tend to get a lot of activity where there is underground water. Not, not so much in this area, but over towards this door at night. Sometimes um, I'll do my paperwork late at night, and I'll sit on that table over there on the settle, and I can be here till early hours of the morning. Quarter to three is usually the time that things happen here. And um, quite often I've sat there and it's come to quarter to three and the dog will start growling at this door. And that's my cue to go to bed. Have you never gone to check no, what it is? No, You're kidding no, me! No, 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 no. I go to bed. If the dog can sense something in that area, then I don't want to know. The other part of this room would be the chimney over here. I just had um, this log burner put in two years ago, oh, about 18 months ago. And when we opened it out, five metres of condensed bird twigs came out. It had been capped off for a long, long time. Uh, and when they were putting this pipe through, they found s small steps going into a hole, which they explained to me was a priest hole. Really? So you can't see it? No, it's capped off. It's all blocked Now, what's off really there. interesting about that is you've dated this pub back to when? 1730. 1730. Mm -hmm. But if it's got a priest hole, that would suggest 14, 1500. Yeah, the, 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 the dates don't tie up with what I've been told. Whether it was listed at that year and the building is older, I don't know. But can you say the first tenants in here were 1730? But certain parts of the building are definitely older than 1730. Perhaps the most interesting thing about the new inn is its location. Uh, the whole area is synonymous with pagan ritual, black magic, uh, witchcraft, hangings. So from a paranormal point of view, it's certainly something that we'd like to investigate further. This is where, um, about seven years ago, when I first came to the pub, I was, I was sat in this window cleaning it, and out of the blue, this thought just came into my head, very unusual. I wasn't thinking anything, but the thought was, two women were hung here in petticoats. And as I thought it, I thought, that's, that's, I wasn't thinking that, that's not unusual. I didn't hear it, I just, the thought just popped into my head. It, 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 sort of frightened me a little bit because I wasn't thinking anything. It, I didn't hear voices um, and I wasn't thinking anything along those lines. So it, it, it was my first suspicion that maybe something was not quite right. Something was here. Well, the height of the witch trials would have been the mid-1600s, which kind of ties in with the place as it is. And there is a, there is a, a tale or folklore that there was a hanging tree uh, at the other side of the property, situated near the stream. What would they be hanged for, though? What was their crime? It could be <clears throat> merely carrying something out as simple as a, as a healing or being, having a child born out of wedlock. So I'll take you now to my daughter's room. This is the room where a figure has actually been seen recently. Christine, is this part of the building very old? Because it certainly looks it with the uneven walls and the, and the beams and I things. I definitely think it is. I mean, I, I don't agree with the dating I've been given. I, I, I honestly think that it, it's a lot older than 1730 because of all the beams, all the stonework, definitely. So this is, um, this is my daughter's room. This is um, where a full figure has been seen. The one and only time in the 10 years I've been here an actual figure has been seen. Uh, my, my daughter's uh, boyfriend was here one night and um, he was lying on the bed. She'd just come in from work. It was two o'clock in the morning. She was in the shower. He had all the lights on. The door was open. For, but for some reason, my dog, Bo, wouldn't come into the room. Now, my dog loved 
Carrie Ann's boyfriend, absolutely adored him, wouldn't leave him alone, but he, she kept calling her and she wouldn't come in. And he was watching TV, the TV was over there at the time, and there was a lamp here. So he was lying on the bed and the, the lamp was shining on the TV. So he said he reached around to turn the lamp off and stood by here in front of him was a woman with long black hair and a black dress. But he said she wasn't stood on the floor, she was hovering. And as he looked away and turned back, she was gone. He must have freaked out. Absolutely. My daughter came up from the shower. He was, he had turned every light in the building on up here. And, and they'd come into my room and said they were sleeping in my room that night. <laughs> and has anyone given you any idea who that figure could have been? I've been told the connection with the two ladies that were hung in petticoats, the two women hung in petticoats, is a mother and daughter and I believe that this is the mother. Well, I must say, I find the story of the mother and child being hanged for witchcraft in this field particularly disturbing. Imagine that now. Fortunately, these days, we have a great deal of respect for alternative healing. In fact, I can see with a nice bit of reflexology now. See you next time. Bye-bye. Michaela's getting her ghoul on in Blackpool this Friday. New and exclusive to yesterday, Great British Ghosts is back with a double bill from nine. Cutting through the highlands next, though, with Coast. <laughs>